This is Geometry Chapter 8, Section 1, in which we will be studying the geometric mean. When we talk about a geometric mean, all we're talking about is a value for x that makes a proportion true, a over x equals x over b. They'll tell you the two numbers, a and b, typically, and your job is to find the value that makes it true. <clears throat> so for example, they gave us here 5 and 45, and our job is to find the mean, the geometric mean, between them. That means we need to set up an equation, 5 over x equals x over 45. Well, if we cross multiply, x squared equals 225, take the square root, and we get 15. Now, technically we get positive and negative 15, but we'll just worry about the positive version here. Because typically what we're talking about is uh, side lengths. And as we know, those can't be negative. Let's do another one where we look for a geometric mean between 12 and 15. 12 is to x, as x is to 15. Well, cross multiply, x squared equals 180. Take the square root. You might have it as a radical, 6 squared to 5. Most of you, I imagine, will put it as a decimal, and that's fine with me. Now, geometric means come in handy in right triangles where we draw an altitude in. If we take a generic right triangle here, and we draw an altitude to the hypotenuse, it means we're drawing a line straight down from, in this case straight down, from the right angle to the hypotenuse, so it's perpendicular, you can see we get two smaller triangles. And these three triangles are similar to each other. All three of them are. And we're going to use that fact to help us out with some problems coming up. The key is you have to know what the order of the similarity is. <laughs> triangle ABC, the big triangle, is similar to triangle ACD, which is also similar to triangle CBD. And that similarity is going to help us write some ratios to work with a few theorems here. When we have these similar triangles, we can state some things about them that involve geometric means. For example, the geometric means theorem altitude version says that the altitude to the mean to the hypotenuse is the geometric mean between the lengths of the two segments that it makes on the hypotenuse. Okay. From the similar triangles, what we're saying is m is to h as h is to n. Well, we can bypass the similarity part of it and just go straight to the equation. And there's another geometric means theorem that uses the leg. The leg is the mean between the whole hypotenuse and the part of the hypotenuse next to that leg. I know I didn't say it the exact same wording that's up here, but I use words that mean the same thing. The leg, so B over here, is the mean. Notice it's in the spot that the means go in between the whole length of the hypotenuse and the part of the hypotenuse that's next to that leg. So C and M. A is the mean between the whole hypotenuse 
and the part of the leg next, part of the hypotenuse next to A. Okay. If you use this triangle, notice it keeps showing up. Notice it keeps showing up. It's the same picture over and over. If you use that triangle, it will help you set up your uh, proportions so that you can solve these problems. But it's all about being able to set up the proportions. So our job here is to find x, y, and z. First question you need to ask yourself is what am I looking at? Am I talking about an altitude or a leg? Well, to find x, we're talking about a leg. So x is the mean between which two things? The entire hypotenuse, 28 plus 5 is 33, and the part of the hypotenuse next to that leg. Okay. From here, let's just cross multiply and then solve. If I want to find y, y is a leg, so y is the mean between the whole hypotenuse, which is still 33, and the part next to y, which is 25. Cross multiply, take square root. z that's not a leg, that's an altitude. Z is the mean, the altitude is the mean, between the two parts of the hypotenuse, so between 8 and 25. So Z squared is 200, Z is 14 and change. Notice it wouldn't matter if you put the 25 in this slot and the 8 down here, you're still multiplying them together. So it wouldn't make any difference. Let's do one more where we have to set these things up, just to make sure we've got it. Okay. Notice here in this case, we're given what this altitude is. And our x is something over here. So let's find x first. 12 is the altitude, so 12 is the mean between the two sections of the hypotenuse, so between 9 and x. Cross multiply, and in this case we do indeed divide. So we have x equals 16, which I'm going to put onto the picture now because that will help me with my other parts of the setup. Now, we know we're looking for z. z is a leg, so it's the mean between the whole hypotenuse, which is now 25, and the part next to z, which is 9. Cross multiply, take square root. And then finally to find y, y is the mean between the whole hypotenuse, 25, and the part next to y, which is 16. Cross multiply, take a square root. Three proportions, two theorems that take care of all the heavy lifting for you. Always remember the mean goes in the two diagonal slots from each other. And typically we write them bottom left and top right. You could do it the opposite way. You could go this way with it, but it wouldn't matter. Okay, bottom left and top right is the normal position for them. Um, but the means go there. And then what are the means between is what goes 
in the other two slots. Okay. If you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down. Bring them in with you to ask, and we will see you in class.